Should we move on to Field of Screams then? Sure. <gasps> yeah. So Andy still hasn't seen Wreck. Nope. No. But he has seen, through my badgering, the Babadook. Yeah. Babadook. Duck. Duck. <laughs> um, I thought it was okay, which apparently makes me a heathen. Well, yep. <laughs> it's a it's a great film. <laughs> I mean, it's all right. <laughs> well, it's, okay, so for those who haven't seen The Babadook, it's, a, it's an independent Australian horror film. Um, Athena Kent is his mother who's lost her husband in a car crash, but she's got the son who is an absolute terror. And she's sort of being driven yep. mad and sort of, you know, losing sleep over this. So this this mysterious book materialises called The Babadook, which is sort of all very scary charcoal drawings about a monster that will stalk her. So she gets rid of it, but the mm. book comes back and then she starts to become haunted by this shadowy figure. And she has to sort of face this monster and, and deal with her internal struggles. So so what? So yeah. why are you her enlighten sister's us? a twat. Huh? The kid? Her sister oh, is a twat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're all twats. Yeah, I mean, that's... The thing is, I don't like that it relied on these characters just being complete knobs. I mean, the, the main woman's fine, and I like that it isn't, oh, she's really fucking stupid, and that's the only reason it works. Like, both her and the main boy are very good characters. Her sister's a dickhead. She literally goes into the police and is like, I'm getting stalked. And he's like, and, and you know, they sent me this book that says it's going to kill me. And the policeman's like, have you got the book? She's like, no. And the policeman's like, well, fuck off then. And she, that's just not what would happen. The police would still take a report and offer her some sort of solution and or protection. Maybe not in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clearly. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> the police in Australia don't care about stalkers and death threats. Not in Australia. Because <laughs> if you haven't got the book that proves it, you can get fucked. Well, the book returns anyway, so you're going to be like, look, <laughs> I've got it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and she's just like, oh, sorry, I'll just leave then. And I just feel like in real life, the police would be like, no, you just file the report and we'll sort something out. <laughs> Report goes in the bin. I don't know why, but that bit specifically really <laughs> pissed me off. I was going to say, if you if your negative view on the Babadook is based on that alone, then I mean... <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, well, yeah, I mean, that's the main negative. It's just that the other characters were really annoying, but... Well, I don't consider that a negative, because I think that's... Considering the whole thing's really about sort of her dwindling mental health and how sort of isolated yeah. she feels, I think that's a big part of it, is yeah. the fact she's just surrounded by, you know, unhelpful or actively antagonistic... <laughs> people in her life yeah exactly i found the boy very very irritating that's, You're supposed that's also to. the point <laughs> yeah i know i'm just saying we did a very very good job because they've done their research the worst. <laughs> he's supposed to get under your skin though you're supposed to like almost like hate him like how she is feeling as well that's like there's a whole point. You're not supposed to really like the kid why is it when you first watched midsummer and you were like oh i don't like it because it disturbed me <laughs> Well, yeah, but whereas with Midsummer, I was like, okay, I get it. Whereas this, it's just like the kid's annoying, s still annoying. <laughs> yeah, but it's more, it's, it's it's deeper than that. Yeah, I know it's deeper than that. That doesn't stop it being really fucking annoying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I, I mean, I, I've written about this analytically for uni, so maybe I'm biased. I mean, it's not, so I wouldn't say it's a scary film, although it is a horror. No. But I just think in terms of like, as a, as a modern horror film, it's so, like, beautifully constructed. Like, there's n basically no jump scares. There's no, like, you know, bullshitty kind of horror vibes like you get in, say, like, The Nun or Annabelle. Like, yes, there's yeah. a creature, but the creature's not, you know, arguably not there. It's basically a manifestation of her inner demons and problems yeah. and psycho psychological problems. Like, there's, there's no yeah. actual creature stalking her. It's all internal. It's all character-driven horror. No, yeah. I, I just think it's so yeah. well constructed and, you know, rich with symbolism and sort of, you know, all these great sort of psychological ideas instead of just like going, boo, ah. Yeah. I didn't like the end. Yeah. the e I will agree the ending the, is... The resolution of basically just shouting it and telling it to fuck off. And then like chaining it in the basement. Yeah. That's, yeah. I was just like, this is a bit of a cop out. That's an ending that works on the analytical standpoint, like in terms of its meaning, yeah. but not as a, as a plot thing. I agree with that. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, also, it was quite obvious 
that either they just didn't have a CGI budget at all, or they definitely ran out of it by the end. <laughs> Wait, which bit are you talking about? With the POV. You know when it's just like a, it's supposed to be the big spooky thing, and it's obviously just someone stood there flapping two black bed sheets around. <laughs> <laughs> I think that adds to the effect. <laughs> Most of the time, you just never see him. It's literally just the the hat hmm. and a coat well, l- that you just see in random places. I also love there's like there's several moments like this, but there's a moment where like she's in the kitchen cleaning up, and just through the window you see like yeah. the, the outline, and it just lingers and just lets you discover it in your own time. And you know, there's yeah. no there's no yeah. sort of like on the soundtrack or anything. It just leaves it there. No, but that is like kind of more like the bigger jump scare in the film but it's not it doesn't it's not like the hollywood jump scare where it's literally screaming at you like oh there's something scary on screen you like you you see it and you're terrified but there's no music really to go along with it to you kind of stimulate that response yeah because like the yeah. hollywood jump scare the reason it's so like annoying and fake is there's nothing necessarily scary there because the music is so loud and sudden it triggers like you know the fight or flight response artificially yeah. there's no emotional response this doesn't have that. It's it makes you scared because it is actually like kind of scary, you know. It it organically yeah. frightens you. It, there's no reliance yeah. on just sort of like jolting you awake. Something that it does similar to Midsummer is that it tells you the plot basically at the beginning through the book. Through the book, kind of like with yeah. Midsummer, where it's written on the tapestries. Yeah, you have to kind of pay attention. To the meaning behind it, where it's just like you're gonna kill the dog, you're gonna kill the son, you're gonna kill yourself type thing, and then it's like you have to make like, almost like friends with it, and then it will stay with you, like as a pet. Like it even says that in the book. Yeah. Like right at the, right at the beginning. Yeah. You know, it's like all the clues are there. I forgot the dog dies. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's very sad. <laughs> I just got like hit with a wave of sadness. <laughs> yeah, but that just remind me because like another thing I really like is like the cinematography has this very nice. It's all grey, pretty much. Yeah. But like mm. it, it works in this case because you know it's all about this sort of depression, you know, and mental illness. And so mm. having everything just feel so dark and sort of charcoal grey and sort of devoid of life really works that sort of feeling of entrapment and sort of depression. And yeah. also, like, all, all the stuff to the Babadook, like, especially with the book, there's this very sort of, yeah, like, this sort of charcoal y kind of black feel to it. I don't it's know. It's all the similar colour palette and shades and. Yeah, it feels yeah. very sort of like. I don't know, there's just a sort of very consistent texture to the sort of the design of the visual horror. That, I don't Almost know. as if it's like in the book. Type yeah, thing. It, it, yeah. You know, it feels like, you know, the book come to life, like a, a manifestation. There's just this very nice sort of consistent visual kind of language to it. That I just find really, yeah. really satisfying. Because even like the, the TV, when I'm watching TV, it's all in black and white. Yeah. And it's all like old cartoons and shows. Yeah, I was wondering that. Like what channel shows fucking 1900 or 1890s fucking films <laughs> Turner classic movies what channels do you manage to tune into and where can I watch it it's only in Australia yeah <laughs> yeah obviously we don't have any modern TV programs there maybe it's like in Gravity Falls the um, boring old lady old time movie channel <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> is uh, all these things that I I had issues with about the film you're just going to explain away it's like oh it's in Australia <laughs> that makes it okay <laughs> it's well, normal I mean, in Australia so I mean what did, so did you like the film what was is your overall opinion like positive or negative or um positive I think so you do like it it just... didn't it didn't blow me away I think you overhyped it which you do with most of these films um well it's because I want you to get into horror there's so many great horror films that you just haven't seen <laughs> Yeah, um, I would probably watch it again. I did like there was there wasn't a reliance on jump scares, hmm. or in fact any jump scares. Yeah, I mean that's the main reason I got you to watch it because I think that's an example of like good modern horror, you know, in yeah. terms of yeah. like analytically and using the genre in an interesting and you know, in a good way without being yeah. like you know just yeah. audience baiting. What did you think, Georgia? I I really liked it. I've um I've seen it twice now, 
Um, the first time I watched it was when I was in college a couple of years ago in the little cafe, <laughs> like on my phone. <laughs> ah, as Nolan intended. <laughs> yeah, so it's very different watching it in the bedroom at night with all the lights off. You know, it's a different experience. And both times I absolutely enjoyed it because of the whole, I don't know, like the whole metaphor of the film of it being her depression and her going through it. And it's her trying to battle that depression, which is the Babadook. And I really, really enjoy it. I think it's a very good horror film. Yeah. 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 It's just you, Andrew. It's no bit summer though, is it? <laughs> well, they're very, very well, different. Yeah. I mean, that's apples and oranges. So the great thing about horror is there's so many different ways to do it. 